because moving into the latest, you know, the current era of the Marvel Spider-Man, there's a lot to unpack and it's going to be hard to unpack all of it because it's such a you're opening the gates for so much more. And there's parts there's things I like about that with, you know, Spider-Man now being a part of the Marvel Cinematic Universe and so forth. And there's also things that kind of make it hard or complicate things. And it's really, I think, trade off. It's a trade off. And I know you're not a huge fan of Tom Holland's Spider-Man films. Um, that being said, I, I understand some of the criticisms for them and I have a lot of criticisms for them. That being said, I cut them some slack because it's such a different thing that they have to handle. You know, it's things that the original movies never had to deal with. Um, so now that we've got the Marvel Cinematic Universe, you know, you first of all, you have the existence and the cameo effects of different players within the Marvel Cinematic Universe, like obviously Tony Stark being, you know, like a major player in both of those movies. Mm -hmm. um, and things like that are, you know, it complicates things. And it's hard because I think a lot of people jump on the love train of the new movies because it's just, oh, it's all iterated. You know, like everything is uh, are incorporated into these movies. Now it's like this big universe and he's got other superhero friends and Tony Stark and the Avengers and things like that. And I do kind of like that, but I do think it takes a little bit away from it. And it kind of, it also, I think it covers over some of the weaker spots. It's yeah. like the, uh, the, the way that, and this Marvel does with a lot of their movies is that the way that the solo movies, their weaknesses get covered by the the um, the team up abilities and the nods and the Easter eggs and the hints and the ways that they fit into the larger movies. And it covers up a lot of those weaknesses for me. So um, we'll just start with Tom Holland's portrayal of Spider-Man. Um, we may have some contention on this. I do not have a problem with Tom Holland's portrayal of Spider-Man. I think he is a great actor and I think. I really like what he brings to the table as Spider-Man. And I say that barring the fact that I think he had to do something different from the last two as well. Like, I think he had to make his own. And so I give him the credit for making his own Spider-Man. Yeah. He plays a really fun, young kid Spider-Man. Yeah. Well, it's, it's actually, it's interesting because it's, it's he, and he even said this, uh, it's clear that like most of his inspiration in portraying Spider-Man actually came from Andrew Garfield. Like a lot of the mannerisms and a lot of the, so the way that he talks, like, and he said, he was like, I'm going to rip some of the things that he did. Um, and I think he does it really well. Uh, my issue with, um, the portrayal of Spider-Man isn't really Tom Holland's fault. Hmm. Uh, my issue with it is that it's, to me there, I never feel like there's high stakes with him. I feel like he's meant to be, uh, cute and his movies are meant to be fluffy and sort of fun uh, especially homecoming it's nothing seems to matter in that movie mm -hmm. um and the main compelling aspect of spider-man is that like his personal problems are always getting more in the way of his or his spider-man problems are always getting in the way of his personal life mm -hmm. and in homecoming that's kind of the case but he bailed out on every occasion so whereas in spider-man 2 what they did so well was that um his Spider-Man problems really caused problems in his personal life. Mm -hmm. And it was so compelling because you just wanted this guy to be able to live his normal life the way they wanted to. And in Homecoming, it's like they sort of try to act like that's the case, but there's never any consequences for anything that he yeah, does. Yeah, I remember and, talking. And it feels so, I don't know, it just, it, it feels so against Spider-Man to me. And on top of that, they the fact that they won't even go near Uncle Ben is a massive problem because he is so integral to Spider-Man as a character. And the fact that they act like he doesn't even exist and almost tried to shoehorn Iron Man in as the Uncle Ben figure it just feels completely wrong to me. Mm -hmm. And I can agree with that, with it feeling wrong. That being said, I don't I wouldn't I would not fault them entirely for that because of the fact that on their end, they may be thinking, you know, we've seen this Uncle Ben thing happen like twice now. We've got to give people something new. We got to try and they've really worked hard to try and separate the Spider-Man from the old ones. So while I agree with you that I wish there was the Uncle Ben aspect, um, you know, I don't like hate them for well, it's more that they, it. they did away with the Uncle Ben aspect and they didn't find something with enough dramatic weight to replace it. Yeah, I, I, I would agree with that. And that was really my problem with the first movie. I really loved Tom Holland's performance in the first movie. And um, I've actually, that being said, I've always enjoyed Tom Holland's performances in the team up movies more than I do his uh, 
I think he can carry a movie as an actor um, in his movies outside of Spider-Man. But that being said, with Spider-Man, I don't know that he carries the uh, he has the star power theoretically. But in uh, Captain America Civil War and all the Avengers movies that he's a part of, he steals the scene in all his every time he gets on screen. He's so lovable, so fun and cute. His dialogue is always so much so clever. And I think that where he excels as Spider-Man is the clever dialogue and like the kind of just like the um, staples of the character. Whereas when he has to carry a whole movie and be an actual character, I feel like they've struggled to build a real character out of Spider-Man. Yeah, that's um, that's what I mean. They, it's like they want him to be cute. and Yeah, they want him that and one note. And and it's, the one note is really great when he's swinging in in Civil War and making jokes and yeah. fighting everyone. Or, you know, when everything in Endgame and uh, Infinity War is going on, it's, it's really fun. He's stealing the scene all the time. But in his own movie, I feel like the writing is not to the level that those team up movies is in the dialogue. And... It, it makes it struggle because he doesn't have a lot left under him. And they, they have come to rely on their tone so much that it doesn't feel like there's really a lot of character underneath it. Yeah. Like I, it's almost like it's, I don't even fault like Tom Holland. It feels like he doesn't have a lot to work with. Like if you go back and you compare, which I think this is the best comparison of all of them is like something like uh Spider-Man Homecoming and Spider-Man 2 with Tobey Maguire was that what really made Spider-Man 2 work was how deeply personal the conflict was and how they really gave it the time to breathe and they gave the character time to learn. He had consequences and high stakes at every turn and that was complemented by a great bad guy and great set pieces, great writing and great pacing you can see where they've tried to hit all of those notes in the, in Tom Holland, Spider-Man movies, but they don't hit as hard. They mm. don't, it's like, they've got too much else. It's almost like, and this is the weight of being in a cinematic universe is that they've got too much else. They've got to do too. That's the other thing there. It becomes a point where the focus that the original um, Spider-Man Tobey Maguire trilogy had or the ability to focus so deeply on the one character and his arcs. Whereas now when you're in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, you're beholden to so much else that I think that it distills um, the life out of a lot of its characters, not just Spider-Man. Um, the life is all there in the team ups. But in, when the, a lot of the characters have to stand on their own, it feels like that they're not even just not even allowed to do what they need to do to really create super compelling stories within the characters. Yeah. They're great at creating characters and personas, but they struggle to really give the characters the life in their own contained stories that I think they need to really be able to have a truly great movie because I, you know, I've really enjoyed and loved a lot of the Marvel cinematic universe movies and especially the teen ups. But if you look back and try to find like in all of the solo movies, if you try and find like how many of them were truly just great movies, you know, maybe two or three, they've, they've got like 10 years of movies, but like two or three of them were like, just st stood on their own as great movies where the characters really got fulfilling arcs and they really executed everything, you know? And, and I think that's because they end up beholden to so many other aspects of the universe in their films that it becomes hard to pull it all together because at some point you're juggling so many things, you're going to drop some. Yeah. And I think that in all art, um, you know, it's common advice and something to always remember is to, to not bite off more than you can chew yeah. and, um, focusing on, and, and that's what, why the Tobey Maguire spider mans the first two specifically. And it's, was the downfall of the third, you mm -hmm. know, it was, but the first two specifically did those, those things that we're talking about so well. And, a lot of superhero movies and other movies, franchise movies across the board would benefit so much from taking that hint. Yeah. Well, I, uh, the main issue with uh, Tom Holland, Spider-Man is that I don't feel like he's developed past the first scene that he was in, in civil war. I thought the first scene that he was in, in civil war with Robert Downey Jr. was great. Like I was so excited for his interpretation because mm -hmm. I felt like they really in that, like, five minute scene just nailed all the aspects of Spider-Man. Mm -hmm. And I feel like ever since then, he's been so flat and so one note and it's not Tom Holland's fault at yeah. all. Uh, he plays him well, but 
it feels like all they want is for him to be cute and people to smile when he comes on screen. And that works in the team up movies. Like you were talking about, like it, it works fine in the team up movies and he steals the show, but in his own movies, it feels so empty. It feels like so, it feels like they want it to be light and fluffy and that's fine, but it just doesn't work for, for more than two hours. And it doesn't work when, when you don't feel the weight of anything going on. Like I never felt like, um, like he was in, in any real danger in Spider-Man Homecoming. Yeah. And I don't know. It, it feels so against like the core of Spider-Man's character. Like as much as the Amazing Spider-Man movies got wrong, they got it right that he had he had a sacrifice for everything. Like he lost everything in those movies mm-hmm. and he lost everything in the original three Spider-Man movies. And I feel like in, in Spider-Man Homecoming and Spider-Man Far From Home, it's just like, you know, he's Spider-Man. Look, isn't he cute and funny? And yeah. Yeah, and and I think like, uh, I will say to push back a little bit, um, I think Spider-Man Homecoming struggled the most um, and that movie really didn't have much original to it to begin with and that it, it had these weird shoes to fill and it didn't do either. It didn't fill the shoes, but it also didn't really make new shoes. Yeah, it was it was really strange. But that being said, I after I, I went into um, the second movie, Far From Home, with really low expectations and maybe that was what made me like it so much, but I thought that far from home did a lot, much better. I thought it was a much better film across the board. I don't know that it fixed the pro all the problems that we already had, but I did really enjoy that movie. And I thought that they handled him having an arc. I don't know if it was the arc that I wanted, but I thought that they did a lot better with developing the character. I think where that movie worked a lot better for me was Jake Gyllenhaal as Mysterio. Mm -hmm. I think it, um, I think it worked well for, Spider-Man's character like I thought it was a good villain to go up against uh I didn't think the movie was working up until uh Joan Hall made the switch to to like reveal that he was the villain essentially Mm -hmm. like I wasn't really into it it up until that point up until that point it felt like it had every one of the problems from homecoming and I was like okay this is just more the same uh after that flip I think it was around like the hour point uh the second hour was much better and I was like, okay, I actually, yeah. I actually could see. I this really working. enjoyed the climax of that movie, and I liked the way they handled him um, with Tony Stark and the shoes that he had to fill and um, his struggle. I thought him as a character, he they did a better job, better job of giving him a struggle, right, and making him feel like there was some real weight and stakes to what was going on. But they they still maintained that you know fun high school vibe while still while kind of upping the stakes and doing that. And I thought they just the movie across the board was better executed so that being said what's next for spider-man within the mcu i think it'll be interesting to see where they go from here because spider-man honestly for the mcu to continue working at the level that it did all the way up until endgame spider-man has to step into a lot bigger shoes in my opinion i don't feel like and this may be a um controversial take but i don't feel like spider i don't i don't feel like Marvel has the firepower right now in its characters without Spider-Man. Mm-hmm. Um, just in that all of its new characters and all the replacement characters that has been adding so far, we'll see what they have to offer. None of them have been hitting the way that Thor and Iron Man really did. You know, like if, if you don't have your Thor, Iron Man, Hulk, etc., Like that was a superstar cast of characters that were so well realized. And a lot of the new characters, like looking at like Falcon, Winter Soldier, um, you know, all the new peripheral characters that that they've added in Captain Marvel, you know, nobody is stoked on those characters. But Spider-Man is the one character that has the legacy to back him up that can really lead this through, you know, even like Doctor Strange. They, You know, there's been talk of Doctor Strange being like, you know, a bigger character character in the coming movies and i'm like and i love you know benedict cumberbatch but i don't know that his i feel like he phones in his doctor strange and i i don't know that that character can really carry the weight of someone like tony stark and it's going to be so hard because robert downey jr like i don't know that anyone can carry that weight ever again but that being said i think the person with the most can potential the character idea with the most potential to really steal the show is spider-man and right now he's not doing that and he's shown the potential too. I think he has the possibility too. But he's with the third movie that they do, and wherever they go from there involving Spider Man, I need to see him step it up. Yeah. And I think if they go the sort of Spider Verse route, um, which I haven't heard any more news on that, but um, I don't know if that's 
actually going to be what they do. But I think if they go that route, then then that'll be really interesting. Yeah. Um, uh, I think the the multiverse route is probably their best option, especially after losing um, Chadwick Boseman. Yeah. Like that was another character that that could have that stepped really into stepped a bigger up. role. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I hate that. Um, but I think the multiverse route is the way that they should go. Um, that being said, the, they're basically going to be uh, copying what Spider-Verse or Into the Spider-Verse did right. Yeah, that. that's the hard thing. about. I want them to do multiverse so bad with Spider-Man 3 and the coming movies. You know, I want them to open up that can of worms because that's really the only thing that can really get me excited personally um, for a new Marvel arc. Um, but that being said, you know, in, Into the Spider-Verse did that so well that it feels a little bit awkward to say that they should go there now. Honestly, what I want to see for Spider-Man is more Spider-Verse movies. More, mm-hmm. more Into the Spider-Verse movies. Yeah, like and that was ones. the next thing that I want to talk about. We didn't really include Into the Spider-Verse in this, you know, review. And that is because it is an animated film. But I do want to touch on it just briefly and say that Into the Spider-Verse, if we're actually looking at it, I would say that, you know before getting into the film, if we're ranking Spider-Man movies, I think we probably both agree that out of all the Spider-Man franchise films, Spider-Man two was the best one. Mm -hmm. Um, It's really such a great film and an iconic film. That being said, I think that into the spider verse is on that same level. You know, it's hard to say because it doesn't have the time tested. You know, we haven't seen how it ages, um, but I think it will age very well. And I, I really think that, that, into the spider verse is levels above everything else that's been done in Spider-Man outside of Spider-Man two. I would even say into the spider verse is better than Spider-Man one. You know, mm-hmm. I would put those two films as like the best ones, but um, since we are just keeping this to live action, I'll just say into for anyone, you know, watching this, it's like, but into the spider verse is really the best. You it's way better. We agree. <laughs> <laughs> we agree. Uh, and, but that being said to include into the spider verse in this assessment would be, Ad. <laughs> we we could talk about that film for quite a while because it really is brilliant. I, I love so much of what it does, um, but also so much of what it does is so new and fresh. And that's right. what I love about it. But it also doesn't really relate that much to the Spider-Man arc that we've been dealing with with these other three portrayals mm-hmm. in that, you know, the, the classic Spider-Man bit by a spider, Uncle Ben, you know, typical villains arc they did so much new and they did so much well that you could talk about it for a long time right um but i would put that one up there i don't know how you would fit it into talking about all the films though as a whole um so yeah i I definitely think out of the live action spider-mans uh two spider-man two with toby mcguire is by far the best one um which what would you say would be the best series as a whole you know, the problem is they all have problems, you know, they all suck in some ways. They all have yeah. something that really dropped the ball. Um, I guess just because of how good Spider-Man 2 is, um, I'd have to go with the first series mm-hmm. is the best one because uh, I don't really. I think the first two are strong on their own. I don't I don't enough. care for Homecoming or Far From Home at all. Like yeah. even Far From even Home, when I think can, is a good movie. I, I'd say they're better. Yeah, I like Far From Home better, but it's I still not enough don't... to carry like a series itself as being like this is the best series. Right. But even with all the issues of the Amazing Spider-Man movies, I like the parts that I like about those movies more than I like uh, the Tom Holland movies. There's almost too much lukewarm in Tom Holland's movies. Yeah, it's like at even best, the good they're parts. Like, they're fun. They're just it's, it's just like oh, that there's was nothing good. that impressive. In in the Amazing Spider-Man movies, I feel like there's a lot there's a lot of lows and there's a lot of highs. And some of the stuff that those movies did right did better than the original trilogy and the new stuff. Mm. Um, so, yeah, the originals, I'd say, are the best series as a whole. Um, but if I had to rank them, like, movie by movie, I'd say Spider-Man 2 is the best. Then I'd say probably Spider-Man 1 and um, the first Amazing Spider-Man would go, like, side by side for me. Mm-hmm. And then um, kind of the rest of them just... It's really hard to I'd compare. say Spider-Man 3 and Amazing Spider-Man 2 are the worst, too. Yeah. But Far From Home and... The Far From Home is better than Homecoming, but they kind of go in the same. Yeah, it's like I don't, and I don't want to sound like you know we're downing the new Spider Man because like there's so much that I like about it, but the it, the problem is just that the highs aren't high enough. Yeah, it's that they do have highs. They're strong movies in in their own right, but they don't hit the highs that like you know even if you look back at the Amazing Spider Man, you can look back at it and go, 
well, that was the worst one, you know, because yeah. that was just riddled with problems across both two movies. But that being said, the highs of those movies were more memorable than the highs of Homecoming and yeah. Far From Home. Like, it, it, even if I think back to like the the experience of watching them for the first time, like I was so I was like four years old when the first when Spider-Man 2 came out. Mm. And I remember seeing that movie in theaters like it was probably one of the first movies I remember seeing in theaters. And I remember watching him swing at the end of that movie just like. This is incredible. And I remember seeing the first Amazing Spider-Man movie and, and the swinging scene at the end is just incredible. And and I was just like, oh, this is amazing. I don't have any like memory like that of seeing the, the new movies. Yeah. Like the new movies at best, they're fine and, and they're kind of forgettable. That's something where it's the, the, the odds are pitted against the new movies too because they are the last ones to come too. Yeah. Um, but that being said, if you look at something like, I mean, I know it's a completely different medium. You look at Into the Spider-Verse, they didn't have a problem with it. The, but the problem is that what what the Tom Holland Spider-Man should learn from Into the Spider-Verse is that um, they took risks. They took risks and they did something new. They really stepped out. The problem is that the Tom Holland Spider-Man is just too stagnant. But that being said, I feel like they do have the possibility to yeah. remedy that. It just depends but on it, where the new Marvel vision goes with the third movie and what comes after. It just, it just kind of feels like it, it, it has that that it, it gets the bland side of the MCU for me. Like even, even down to the music, like the Spider-Man theme just isn't, yeah. it's very like generic MCU theme. And uh, I don't know, like I, I feel like it kind of, the the final swinging scene in Far From Home kind of captures my feeling. I just go, mm. it doesn't quite look right. It <laughs> yeah. doesn't quite feel right. It just kind of feels bland. Yeah. But, and that kind of goes back also to the times, you know, a lot of these new movies we've talked about multiple times. We don't have time to get into it on this podcast, but uh you know, the the more TV like feel of uh, Marvel movies and the way that they don't really aside from like Endgame and the big films, the solo films have a very TV show esque feel to them. Um, even when they're big budget, even if they're well produced and they look great, they don't really have quite the cinematic experience the, quality. The that other thing the that thing. I hate about Tom Holland, Spider-Man is the Spider-Man suit. The Spider-Man suit, the actual design of it looks good. But it's like partly CGI. And it looks CGI. Mm -hmm. It looks it looks fake. And if you look at you come from Amazing Spider-Man 2, which has the best movie suit, especially when Garfield's actually in the suit and it's not it's not CGI. Like the suit looks incredible. Mm -hmm. uh, and they got like the big yeah. eyes and it just looks awesome. Yeah. And then you go to Tom Holland Spider-Man and it looks it has this like glossy CGI look to it. Yeah. 